I'd like to welcome all the board members. Thank you for being here. Uh, I'm sure Michael will be here shortly. Uh, he was with us last night. Uh, thank you for all of those that are attending on Zoom. We appreciate you attending. We're sorry that we couldn't do uh, an in-person annual meeting uh, again. Uh, I, I really wanted to have one, but uh, we have it from two physicians that with the uh, that was, that's been going on with uh, COVID-19 over the last month, month and a half, that it was not advisable to do an in-person meeting. And we think it's more important to ensure the health of our members than it is to have a, an in-person meeting. Uh, we're gonna try and have our uh, fall meeting in person. And uh, for next spring, uh, hopefully we have a, a, a large in-person meeting. Um, uh, get all the, uh, the board members to uh, please stand up one at a time, uh, starting with Doug and introduce yourself. No credit alive been on this board since I have dark hair. <laughs> and I'm uh, currently the uh, the representative of the Mexico Retiree uh, Healthcare Authority. Hello, everyone. My name is Jason Quintana. I am a retiree of NMDOT. Uh, I've been on this for four years. It's uh, nice to serve and it's a good thing to to be part of the board and to be members of the group. And uh, we all need to work together to ensure that uh, the retirees are not forgotten and that their voices are heard. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lee Caruana from Raton. I retired from uh, Miners Colfax Medical Center uh, in Raton. And I've been on the board now for uh, almost four years. My name is Barbara Castillo. I'm from Raton, New Mexico. Uh, I was a public official for many years. I retired as a county clerk, and uh, I'm very proud to be on this board, and I'm glad to be able to serve. Thank you. My name is Joel Papper. Uh, I'm also from Raton, New Mexico, retired from the New Mexico Department of Game and Fish. Uh, I'm the past president and this fall will be my last time on the board for a while until I can run again. So uh, it's been a pleasure working for you all. I'm Michael Francis. Uh, the president's position was thrust upon me about a year ago, and I'm, I'm trying to do the best job that I can uh, with this COVID and with the things that have gone on, it's been a little difficult. I think we can continue moving forward and we can get this organization back on track, uh, doing the things we need to do to support the retirees, which is what the whole purpose of this organization is. And uh, also want our, our executive director uh, to introduce himself. Good morning, my name is Miguel Gomez. I'm the executive director, I've been the executive director for three years. Uh, it's been a pleasure to, to work on behalf of retirees and a pleasure to work with this board. Um, I think we've uh, had a lot of accomplishments, um, especially in, uh, in the legislative realm over the last uh, few years. We'll keep working at it. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, before I start the president's report, I'll, uh, I'll let all our uh, members that are attending by Zoom know that uh, there is a place, if you haven't seen it built in in the agenda, for membership input and questions. Uh, when we do get to that, uh, as long as you uh, either electronically or uh, physically raise your hand, our uh, moderator can recognize you so we can get you to speak. And uh, we will be limiting uh, each person speaking to three minutes. Uh, would appreciate it if you could keep it to that. Uh, so we'll, we'll go, when we get to that, uh, I just wanted everyone to know what we were doing before we start. Uh, President's report, again, you know that we haven't had a, an in-person meeting for quite a while. I'm hoping to get back to that. Uh, I want to thank all of our members that have called and emailed our, leg our legislators on the issues that we've asked you 
to contact them on. Uh, over the past couple of years, we've had several. We've had uh, some runs at us uh, as retirees trying to change things, trying to change the uh, PERA board, other things. We've asked for your assistance in that, and you have responded uh, and been very vociferous to your legislators, and we appreciate that because it does make a difference. Uh, they do listen, and they know that we have uh, a lot of members and that our members have family members who vote, so they do listen, and we appreciate you uh, taking the time to call and email your legislators. Uh, I also want to let you know, and I'm sure most of you are aware, the legislature will be meeting uh, in January once again, and we may face some legislation uh, to change either the makeup of the PERA board or to remove the authority of that board uh, in investing our money. Uh, last year, the uh, Pension Oversight Committee uh, killed the, uh, the legislation at that committee uh, on changing the PERA board. Then one of the members of that committee introduced it as a bill, even though his committee had said they were not going to do it, uh, to change the makeup of the PERA board. Uh, that, the, the Pension Oversight Committee at that meeting said that they would look at establishing a separate board to handle investments for PERA and PRA. So those are just some of the things we'll be looking at this coming session. A lot of times until they start having uh, more interim committee meetings and we start seeing pre-filed legislation, we don't know what exactly they're going to uh, be introducing. So as those things come up, we will try to get word out as quickly as possible uh, by email. Uh, unfortunately, only about half of our members uh, do we have email for, and uh, we'll try to keep you inf as informed as we can. Uh, we're going to be sending out regularly again our uh, newsletters at least three times a year, uh, and we'll be doing the emails more often than that. Uh, coming up this next year in 2023 is something I think is very important. Um, it's election for the board of directors. Right now, there are only seven people, six voting members on the board of directors. Uh, our bylaws say that we can have up to 16 members on the board of directors. To my knowledge, there haven't been that many board members in well over 10 to 12 years, but there were uh, 10 or 11 at one time. So I would like to uh, encourage people, anybody that, that wants to be on the board, that wants to serve, to serve the retirees and uh, who want to work towards those things that we're, that we're trying to do, to please, uh, when the time comes, uh, put in your letters to get on the board. Uh, we'll be sending, I'll be appointing a committee I've already asked some of the members to, to be on that committee to uh, for the election. Uh, and right now, the only person going off of our board this time uh, will be Joel Pafford. His term is over uh, in at the end of 2022 or after the election in 2023, according to our bylaws. So... Uh, if you're interested, please start thinking about it. If you know other people that might be interested, uh, we need people that want to do the job, that want to work, that uh, if this is, does not take that much of your time. It can take as much as you want. If you want to work hard at it, you can, you can do a lot. Um, one of the things that we're going to be doing this coming session is uh, trying to work with the Retiree Health Care Authority. They're going to be working with legislators uh, and other organizations like ERA uh, to improve the solvency of retiree health care. If we don't get behind this, we're not going to have retiree health care. And uh, we, we need to, to work hard with them. So we'll be asking you when the time comes 
shut again, make those phone calls and send those emails. And Doug will be covering more about that uh, when we get to his report on retiree health care. One other thing, this is the last year uh, of your three-year 13th check. No more COLA uh, 13th check, 2%, or if your income was under a certain amount, 3%. Uh, everyone should have already got that in, in July. Uh, your 13th check, that's going away. I want everyone to know that we're going to continue to work right now behind the scenes, uh, trying to get our COLAs back or at least get the formula that was uh, put in the legislature that passed with the bill instituted so that we can start getting those, uh, those raises again even if they're not compounding raises. Uh, we, we've got to do it to keep up with, uh, with healthcare, with the cost of living. Uh, we right now do not have an initiative to try and get a legislator to introduce a bill, to put the COLAs back in. Uh, to be quite honest, it's very difficult to try and get any legislator to get behind that bill after they pass this last one. Um, and I will ask you to please, when you do make those phone calls, let your legislators know that you're going to assert your right to vote and that you have family members who are going to do the same. Uh, we don't just represent our 5,000 members. We represent 40,000 retirees. When you have 40,000 retirees and all of their families, that's quite a few people uh, voting that we can ask them to, to please pay attention to what we're saying. Um, my last thing, second to the last thing, I'm sorry. Uh, we had several members who were upset with the letter that was sent out by uh, the executive director of PERA concerning that 13th check. And specifically that the governor signed the bill uh, giving us that 13th check. Um, that was done by the executive director of PERA with no knowledge of ours. Uh, PERA board is handling that issue and we are not going to get into the middle of that issue. If we start trying to uh, assert ourselves in some political issues that are uh, beyond us, it's going to, it could hurt us more than help us. But we are aware of it and PERA is aware of it. Their board is handling it. And the last thing is that uh, we're going to work with AMBA and our executive director and this board to try and do a big membership drive this year. Uh, we're going to we we need more members. We need them out of forty thousand retirees. Over forty thousand, we have five thousand members. It would be nice if we could increase that. I would like to at least double it. And it's it's hard sometimes to get people to join. Uh, as you see, I'm sure some of you can see on your screens, there aren't that many people on the Zoom. Uh, but we need people to, to be members of this organization and to be active members of the organization. Uh, that's all I have under the president's report. I'll turn it over to our executive director for the legislative report. Mr. President. Yes. Before you go further, we have a meeting which we'll discuss later in November. If someone wanted to, we have nine positions open. If someone wanted to be appointed, could we appoint them in November? We have to wait until next spring before we get them. Uh, I think that the board would have to discuss it uh, at that time if we have people that submit. That's why I say, I mean, should we encourage people to submit and then and then I think in November, we give the board the better why we get people to appoint because they know what we can I, I don't have a problem with that, no sir. Yeah, and that just yeah. plus you know, people yeah. don't want to have to wait until yeah. January to stop. There right. Is. If you are, if you have an interest, please send us that letter. Thank you, Mr. President, uh, members of the board. Thank you. Um, so I just want to very briefly review the legislative session for last year and kind of what happened and the big issues that came up. So, so first of all. Um, we did a lot of work before the start of the session and, and last year, as we do every year. And we last year was a short session, a 30-day session. And so on a 30-day session, it's 
it's supposed to are technically supposed to be limited to budget issues the financial issues um so um issues around the pair of board were not technically allowed to be presented that issue unless the governor placed that issue on her call so we worked with the governor's office very closely and convinced the governor's office not to place that issue on the call and the governor did not do that so so we didn't think that that issue was gonna um come up come into the, the session last year however as uh, president francis said um there was one legislator um uh, a state house member who uh, introduced that legislation as a regular bill and it was found not germane so we, the the process worked and said that that bill wasn't dealing with the fiscal issue so it wasn't considered part of the agenda however what that legislator later did was take another bill that was dealing with fiscal issues it was dealing with the magistrate and ju judicial retirement uh, fund within para and had uh, uh, financial implications and he essentially hijacked that legislation uh, and had legislation that dramatically changed the way the makeup of the para board instead of primarily being elected by the various members and stakeholders, uh, current uh, uh, state, county, city employees and retirees had it, having those members appointed. And it changed a couple of times over the session. Sometimes it was the governor was gonna appoint the majority of those members. Other times it was union representatives were gonna appoint majority of those members. Um, so again, thanks to all our members, we, we opposed that legislation. Uh, the board strongly came down in, in favor of maintaining the, com the composition and the election of the para board members by the members, by the current employees and retirees. And through a lot of hard work, through um, lots of phone calls and emails from our members, we were able to defeat that bill um, on a couple of different occasions. It, it came back with different reiterations. Re um, and we were able to defeat that, so so we're happy to, to report that. Um, we're going to keep an eye out for that same type of legislation coming back for the 23 legislative session. The, the same uh, limitations about bills doesn't apply to the 23 session, which is a long session, a 60-day session, and so any legislation can be introduced. Um, I've also already have been hearing rumors about other legislation that, that may be introduced affecting para. Uh, one organization in Santa Fe, uh, it's called Think New Mexico, they were kind of a, a behind the scenes um, sponsor or, or supporter of the legislation that was introduced last year. And they're continuing to, to kind of make uh, rumblings about other legislation. I don't know what it's going to be, but we're, we're alert to it. We'll, we'll keep an eye on it. And uh, ultimately, we'll be able to board a director to decide if we support or oppose legislation, but, um, but we're, we're always vigilant and we'll remain so. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Miguel. And I wanna thank you for your hard work during the legislative session. For those of you that don't know, uh, he doesn't just serve as our executive directories, uh, also does our lobbying at the uh, legislature. And because of his legislative contacts and his knowledge of the legislature, uh, there's a lot that he does behind the scenes that everybody doesn't see every day, uh, contacting legislators and working with people uh, and taking and introducing myself and other board members to, to those legislators so that we can talk to them that helped accomplish those things that got done. If it wasn't for his expertise and knowledge, I don't think we would have done as good a, a good a job. So I want to thank you for that. Um, our treasurer's report and our treasurer. Uh, Michael Hansen is with us now. Can I, can and, I have one more comment? I was going to comment on something. Apparently, the reconstituting the PRA board is a constant issue. And I think that one of the things that RFP and AM should be doing in driving the issue is instead of attacking the issue, we should come up with a board that would be acceptable to us, which of course would include more retirees. And if the legislature wants, we've got a point of board on retiree health care. That in and of itself is not a problem. The question is how is it constant, how is it constituted? And we ought to be part of that process of doing that rather than stopping legislation from the flight. We should be fine simply introducing legislation from the 
point. I don't think this is going to go away, is it? No. Well, not right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, we're not talking. I'm not talking about this session. Right. But I'm saying, you know, if we if we if we defeat it in the session, let's be ready in 2025 and say, okay, we'll go along with you. But this time, it's to be done. And and we, I agree with you, and, and I, I appreciate what you're saying there. And when uh, Miguel and I were testified in front of the Pension Oversight Committee, that's exactly what we told them. Okay. Because we need more retirees on that board. So yes. that it's not reconstituted, it's the problem. Right. So, so how they get reconstituted. It, it's a very good point. Just just so you know, we have put some for some proposals um, about educating the para board and with regard to investments and, and other stuff like that. But but it was, was the board's position not to, to go along with the legislation as proposed, but the, but the board has, has not taken a formal vote on it. Okay. No, this um, is a long term thing. Right. Yeah. Sorry. All right, our treasurer's report. I just think, Mr. President, um, the, uh, the checking account and our bank balances at Real Grand Credit Union are solid now. <clears throat> they are currently at $104,285. I believe we now have auto pay. So, did you, did you receive any check on auto pay membership? Um, so, so with members, most of our members, though, you can, you, most of our members are, uh, they're, they're, yeah, the payment is through the automatic deduction from Para, and that's been reinstituted, um, uh, last November started and back up again. So, so we did just receive, um, new checks for Para in the last two days. Okay. I don't have that yet, um, but, uh, I don't know when it began, but, uh, the Para board at one time decided to stop uh, paying the auto pay membership fees to us um, and through uh, a number of years fighting with them they uh, we eventually uh, they eventually agreed to start doing the auto pays again at that time the bank balances were going down and we lost a lot of membership because of that um, so what happened is that Basically, fixed costs were being paid, and and a few other things like insurance that we needed to do at that time. That's why that uh, a lot of information didn't get out to membership except through emails, because we didn't have the funds at that time to put out newsletters and things like that. So now that's all corrected. I believe that we will uh, we will have the auto payments done every year. They happen in July, and um, we uh, will have a, a hopefully increased membership from that as well. The uh, the thing about uh, let me see here what I got. <clears throat> the budget uh, I do not have anything about the budget. That budget will not be uh, reviewed or approved until November and during our fall meeting. Um, Mm -hmm. The uh, fixed costs that I talked about are generally going to be payroll costs, um, payroll taxes, which come out, uh, well, they come out monthly for federal and quarterly for state. We have the uh, Altibus, which is uh, our newsletter uh, provider. I guess he puts the newsletter together. The emails. Huh? The emails. He emails it. We have our Verizon bill, which the executive director has a cell phone. And we have rent right here at uh, the FOP Lodge of $450. Uh, the other uh, fees that we may have come out once a year, the insurance, uh, other taxes, uh, generally just uh, miscellaneous things like that. Everything else is going to be a, a, a non-fixed cost. So generally, our fixed costs are we're, we're being paid at that time, and now uh, now we have the ability to pay the fixed cost and to do more membership drive and more in, uh, information on uh, through the uh, newsletters. I don't think I have anything more, Mr. President, to add unless somebody has a question. 
Okay, so there's a question. <laughs> of course. Two, the first thing is approximately what our fixed costs, how much annually. Um, I don't have a total, but I could tell you what each one is. Do you want to? Sure, I can hit it. The payroll, is, payroll is around 32 30 of each. Uh, payroll taxes are, uh, well, the federal monthly is 912 a month, and the state is 363 uh, a quarter. Ultimus, the newsletter, is uh, 431.50 a month. Verizon, well, the Verizon bill may go up, uh, currently 127.94 a month. Rent is 450 a month. And that was one thing that uh, really helped us when we moved from AAA building to here, the rent went considerably down from over $1,000 to this 450 a month. And then our constant contact, which takes care of the newsletters, uh, uh, that's been paid yearly already, right? Good. And that was a little over $400. So that will not show up on the statement at all because it's already run through the statement, 400 and something. Those are the fixed costs. The only other question I have is, are we, what kind of interest are we getting on our money in your grant? It's not much. <laughs> I think in the past we, we uh, well, let's see if I got, maybe I got that information here. If, if we, we used to have CDs and I, I think we should do something like that again especially since the auto payments are now coming back to us. Um, this one does not show up. Well, you're at my point. I mean, we, you know, it's especially with inflation now coming up, you know, if we're getting 1% or whatever it may be, we need to look at, we just brought in a hundred grand or whatever, and then we got a hundred grand in there. We need to find some way to make a few bucks off of that because whatever we got, it's going to be worth 9% less next year. And what I was thinking of doing is when I, uh, under new business, appoint the budget committee to get the budget ready for November, I was looking at that. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of I me. Mean, I was on Rear Brand Credit Union board for 20 years, a big supporter of that. Uh, was 28 million when I got out, now it's 590 million now. So I that money, but it's not the only credit union in town. And if we're bringing in a couple hundred grand or so, we can get people to listen to us. And I think, you know, the first thing is to do is to go to the Brand Credit Say, what can be better? And then we can make that. Good. Uh, that's all, Michael. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And uh, I'd ask Michael to do a, an abbreviated uh, report. He does the full one in November when we uh, do the budget report. And uh, like I said, just with just getting back the uh, the funding through where we get our uh, auto pay from the ERA, it's uh, it's nice to see that we have the money again. We're there for a while. We were down to three to six months of uh, operating and we're having to pinch every penny we could. Yeah. So, excuse me, Mr. President, may I ask a question for, of Mike regarding the budget? I didn't hear anything about the income is, from AMBA. Is. I'm Marilee Daneman. Okay. I didn't hear anything about the income from AMBA, and I didn't hear anything about uh, any costs from the for the website. Again, I asked him to do an abbreviated report, the full report on the uh, uh, on the budget and on the uh, the treasurer's report will be in November. Uh, we do get seventy five hundred dollars from AMBA. Okay. Uh, is the website is a fairly important part of the, of what the organization ought to be doing, and it has not been updated in quite some time. Uh, so I'm just wondering uh, how is that being handled, and that ought to be in the budget somewhere. Ma'am, if you'll wait until the uh, membership input and questions portion, uh, be happy to try and deal with that that question. And uh, uh, right now we're doing the reports. Okay. Thank you. I can say that the, the website is being paid or maintained by uh, by Fat Cow, uh, a company called Fat Cow, and it's two hundred fifteen dollars and something a year. Um, the only other thing, Mr. President, that I forgot to mention, and I'm proud to say that every quarterly 
tax return has been filed on time by me, and uh, the federal uh, the annual report has also been filed. So we're all good with taxes um, up to date. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, uh, next would be the retiree health care report. The first thing I would say is that you know, presidents come and go and they can be replaced as can I. But there's nothing like a big treasure to keep me out of jail. So, retiree health care, you know, there's, you know, as always, good news and less good news and bad news. Just a brief history retiree health care was initiated in 1990. And the reason it was initiated was because uh, state uh, retirees, city retirees, teachers used to get a tax break and didn't have to pay state taxes. Uh, a group of federal retirees sued, saying that was discrimination. They retired, they lived their own life in New Mexico. Why should they not be treated the same? So they eliminated the tax break and gave us the Mexican Retiree Health Care Authority. Surprisingly enough, it wasn't the best legislation ever initiated and had serious problems which continue to haunt us now, not the least of which was people were entitled to their full benefits from the day that they uh, retired, even though the minimum time to pay into it was 20 years, and it wasn't until 2010 before anybody who retired had ever made their full contributions. And as we will discuss later on, those contributions are not enough. But so we're in great shape in one way, and we'd be in an awful lot better shape if done things a little bit more correctly than the first time. The good shape is our solvency. You may have to worry about Medicare. You may have to worry about Social Security. Our solvency is better than both of them. Uh, and we are, our actuaries cannot determine how good our solvency is because it only goes out 30 years. And so we are solvent for 30 years based on current uh, assumptions and current uh, income and outcomes. Uh, it's a little bit different story with the unaccrued, uh, unfunded liabilities, which is a thing for math majors, but nonetheless important. Uh, big brouhaha about PRA and ERB. They're only 60, 70% funded, and you've got to raise rates. Well, retiree healthcare is 20%. And this is the best funding we've ever had, and one of the best funded retiree healthcare plans in the country. But it's it's not enough, obviously. We'll talk about that in a moment. We have over a billion dollars. Uh, in 2014, we had we were gonna run out of money entirely in 2018. And now we've got a billion dollars. Uh, retiree healthcare, which has no uh, professional full-time investment advisor, has, and so the board sets all the policies, uh, has outperformed ERB, PRA, uh, in the last one, five, and 10 year periods. So we are doing a good job. Uh, we also have a good board. And even though you know, it may be appointed, there's nothing wrong with appointing boards, electing boards. The question is how is it put together? This board has got somebody from retired public employees, somebody from retired teachers, somebody from retired superintendents. You've got the state treasurers on everybody's board. You've got PRA and ERB. You have one gubernatorial appointee. And uh, as far as I know, uh, the governor has never talked to him. Uh, he's been there since the last governor, and they just kind of stick around, don't pay much attention. So the board gets along well, we get things done, we're, we're, we're working really well for him. Uh, we've been lucky also because the uh, money that the state has gotten in is to give them raises on employees, which hasn't happened forever. And our assumptions are based on a 3% raise. Everybody's doing much better than that. So our contribution will increase. So that's the good news. The uh, a little extra news, uh, we hired a new executive director, uh, Neil Kiefer. We hired him a couple months ago. Uh, one of the problems with working with the state of New Mexico is that it takes a while to do things. And we hired him in April, and I think it was July before he finally was officially uh, on board. The problem with that was he was the deputy director. He couldn't hire a deputy director until he was officially hired. And now he's officially hired. And so he can hire a deputy director, except that he's offered a position to somebody. And for six weeks, it has been sitting at his desk, the governor's desk. 
So we're not getting that done either. This bureaucracy is not helping us. Our uh, attorney was just uh, just left reasons unknown. And so we now have an opening for an attorney. And so you know, there's still issues out there that have to be addressed. Nonetheless, uh, we are ready for the fall enrollment, which is coming up sooner than one would think. Uh, and one of the things we're going to be asking for next year in our legislative request of some more employees. We've had the same number of employees uh, for the last 10 years. And as we know from here, the number of retirees in both PRA and ERB have gone up substantially. We're able to get the job. Good news is uh, rates, your, your rates for your insurance, the Medicare rates, if you're on a supplement plan, will go up 2%. If you are on uh, the Medicare Advantage plan, those are all determined by each plan, but none of them will go up substantially, if at all. So uh, the Medicare retirees are going to do okay in this. The non-Medicare retirees, it's going to go up 4%. The actuaries prefer 8 and 5 for the two groups. And the board this year said we have enough money and enough solvency that we're going to need that extra uh, increase. Uh, somewhere down the line, it costs us a few hundred million bucks, but we need to get money somewhere else anyway, and we are good for 30 years. So you can count on a 2% increase if you're on the Medicare supplement and probably nothing if you're on the, uh, if you're on the other, uh, other plans. The uh, main problem is this, the state keeps giving us things we have to pay for for free, which they don't reimburse us. The latest one was uh, mental health. If you have mental health issues, we can no longer charge copay. We can no longer charge for services. That has to be given free. I'm all in favor of that, except that this comes out of our contributions. This comes out of your, this is one of the things that make up your rates. And when the state gives us a mandate, they should fund it, and they have not. Uh, during COVID, they didn't fund that either. We had to give free service, which again, we're happy to do that, but that costs somebody, and the state is rolling money, but all it's costing is us. And so those are two things that have to be have to be addressed. The biggest issue is the employee and employer contributions. They have not gone up in 12 years. In the last seven years, in the last 10 years, we've asked seven different times to get small increases. The one player we're asking for a two percent increase to the employer and one employee. Now we're asking for 0.7 to the employer, 0.35 to the employee. And even with those minuscule increases, we've never been able to get it through. We got it through finally through the Senate two years ago and then the governor. So obviously that's going to be something that's very important to us that we're going to be addressing. The other thing that goes unmentioned, and I'm sure none of you even know, is one of the things the legislature did was they agreed to give the uh, Retired Health and Public Care Board $12 million a year to help finance, which is a good amount of money. But they also uh, provide a compounding effect. So that $12 million a year now is $80. And it's only a matter of time for the legislators to say, we can't keep doing that. And that makes the employee and employer contribution even more important. We're happy to, uh, to pay our own way. We ask that the state pay for things they ask us to do. And if they eventually, as they will, take away that money, because at some point it'll be a billion dollars, then we need to have the employees and employers pay for that. The problem is, is that the only way we can make ourselves whole is through our rates and our co-pays uh, and our uh, things we cover. And so, guess who that all falls on? Retirees. If you're not retired, they don't care what you raise your rates here. And one of the things we hear from the legislature is, well, the PRA increases this going to affect, the ERB increases this going to affect. Boy, we can't add another three quarters of a percent because you know, this will just make people go broke. Well, um, you can give yourself a nice pension, but if you don't have health care, Believe me, you're not going to care about that 0.37 or that 0.75. It's it's extremely important that we get that we get that employee employer contribution raised, and we also have another problem, 
and that of all the plans in the state, we are not constitutionally protected. And in fact, the legislation specifically says that it can be taken away from us at any time. It should not be considered a property right. And so it's hard to imagine that, uh, I don't care whether the Supreme Court is uh, Samuel Alito or whoever's in charge of the Mexico is gonna say, well, no, that's not what it says. That's exactly what it says. And so you know, we have to find some way, either to get that legislation amended or to get a constitutional amendment like we did with uh, the PRA and the MP. When we did the constitutional amendment, which was called Constitutional Amendment 4, at the time, the overwhelming approval of that was greater than any competitive uh, legislative race in the state. So people who aren't part of PRA, aren't part of the ERA, they are all willing to do this because they know what an important part of this, this is to New Mexico's economy. 10% of all adults in New Mexico are covered one way or another, or are eligible at some point or another, be part of the Mexican Retiree Health Authority and obtain the insurance from us. So this is a big deal. And we need to make sure that the legislation understands this is a big deal. And so what we will be doing on August 31st in the morning at the, uh, uh, it's not the Retiree Health Care, well, it's the CNM Workforce Training Center on Eagle Rock. We are going to have a half day session of nothing but determining what we are going to ask for with the legislature. And we have invited members of ERB, PRA, the unions, uh, retired uh, uh, superintendents, anybody who has a stake in this issue to attend those meetings and to coordinate with what retiree health care does. Uh, President Francis and uh, Gomez, our executive director, have both been invited and I expect them to be there. And we will then a strategy uh, coordinated with all the stakeholders that we hope will do something that will ensure that your retiree health care will be around. Um, one of the problems we have is police still retire in early 40s. And if they get, now they can't get retiree health care until 55, uh, they can't get subsidized. But even from 55 to 65, that is the largest amount of money that we spend. And we need to get increases in order to, to come back. So I'll leave it at that, except for one more thing. I was elected president again. Uh, the reason I was elected president is I went a fast meeting. I was pointing that out to President Nancy. And uh, could you please hurry? Yeah, they don't. <laughs> there we go. They don't much like me, but they like the way I run it. But this will be my last year on the Retiree Healthcare Authority Board after, after next uh, July. Um, I will ask for this board. I will we'll presume that you're going to appoint me reappoint me today, but but if you do not, or in November, uh, that the next year that we would appoint somebody. I know a couple of people have expressed interest. Um, it's not a difficult thing, but it's an important thing. And so uh, I certainly enjoyed my service on, on, on that board. It's also, also at this point. But you know, times change, as General DeGaulle said during World War II, when somebody said, you're indispensable, General. He said, you know, the cemeteries are full of indispensable. <laughs> uh, and so nobody thought I was indispensable anyway, but we do need to add new blood with this stuff. So with that, I will answer any questions. Yes, Mike. Uh, just a quick one. Uh, what's the indicator of the director's name? Uh, Neil Kiefer. That, 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 that dude that ruined the plants here? Cinnamon. That, um, um, Who's the, who has the doodle up the street? The golden, it's like a, um, the butterscotch color? Whoever's talking, could you please mute yourself? Yeah. Neil Kiefer, and I think it's spelled K E U F F E R. Okay. It's not him. Yeah. So, regardless, you know, unless you're writing by chat, he doesn't. And did the board appoint him? The board appointed him after David Archuleta uh, left uh, to become the director of the ERB. I know David Archuleta. I uh, don't know this man. What do you think as a board? Uh, we we were very happy with him. Uh, and I did. Uh, you know, I, uh, David supported him, and I did. I you know did surreptitious phone calls to the staff and asked them what they thought, so that you know get an idea. And everyone's very happy with him. He's been in charge for four months now. Uh, he is a good guy. He works hard. He knows what's going on. He. he person who's trying to hire as executive director uh, has experience in the healthcare area.
area in New Mexico, which is what we want, uh, because Neil is good with administrative and with legislative. And, you know, it, it, uh, weakness of everybody, retired healthcare, they're not in healthcare being itself. So we want somebody there, you know, at, at, uh, so at this point, I'm, I'm very happy with him, and he's at will of the uh, the boards. I'm happy. He won't be the first director I fire. Is the office <laughs> still in <laughs> Montgomery? <laughs> Just a quick picture. Is the office still in Montgomery, Carolina? Oh, no. The office has moved long since. Oh, it's on Jefferson. Yeah, it's on Jefferson. Yeah, okay. Yes. okay. And it's open, by the way. It was for a long time it was, you know, because of COVID, but it's fully open. Uh, fully staffed, anybody can walk in and uh, get their questions answered or call me. You can do. And of course, you're always welcome to call me or email me and I'll answer any questions. Thank you, Doug. That was uh, that was informative and uh, fully intended in November if you're willing to, uh, if, if the board decides to, uh, I'm going to ask the board to reappoint you. Okay, well, thank you. We would like to punish him. <laughs> <laughs> we want him to suffer a little bit. That's it. We need him here. He makes us laugh. And now that now that we know that he's only going to stay one more year, it's our chance to get a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I appreciate that support. You know, whatever you need. All right. Um, next is going to be our membership input and questions. Again, it's going to be limited to three minutes. Uh, and I believe we already had uh, Merrily Danman was. Uh, starting on that, so I want to uh, recognize her first, and uh, I believe your question was about the update. Uh, your first question was about the update of the website, and I'll let our executive director answer that question and then uh, see if you have anything else you want, want to bring up. I will, but thank you. Go ahead. Yes, I'd like to hear about the website. Uh, Mr. President, members of the board, so first of all, the, the website did go a major um, update uh, within the last three years. Um, it had not been updated before that um, for a long time, is my understanding, but a, a major update to it. Um, I think you've all seen it. Um, AMBA, um, our partner, um, provides the, the support for the website, and uh, it, I think it looks really well. We've, we've gotten a lot of compliments on it. Um, I know Ms. Daneman and other members have offered input on that. We, we actually um, probably incorporated uh, a large percentage, you know, well, maybe 67% of the yeah. of the uh, suggestion that Stadman and other members have made on the website. There was some uh, language that was suggested that we didn't incorporate uh, through a discussion with the president. Uh, we decided that, that some of the language, uh, we didn't want to change the language. It was more, in, in our opinion, more confrontational um in some respects and, and so we, we didn't go that that direction um but you know there, there are still things that we want to uh, change on the website and improve on the website we're always open to uh, suggestions and uh you know we'll take if out. i may yeah yes, if i may if i may speak again you know uh I deliberately, in the sex suggestions that I made, I deliberately avoided suggesting anything confrontational. I suggested things like updating the uh, names and contact information for the local chapters. There is still a dead person recommended uh, listed as the person who's the chair of the Albuquerque chapter. Um, there are also things like there is an article about the confrontation with Wayne Probst, which is now three years or so out of date. There are a number of things like that, which I think really ought to be replaced by things that are new and contemporary and should be refreshed more often. Other than that, I would like to suggest that number one, uh, the bylaws specify a number of committees and a way to get the people who are here today interested and able to be active in this organization would be to reconstitute those committees, even if those committees have to be done by Zoom. For example, a legislative committee, a membership recruitment committee, a newsletter committee, so that people have the opportunity to be involved. And some of those things are in the bylaws, but you don't have to be limited to, the, to what's in the bylaws. I would appreciate seeing that. I would also appreciate more uh, 
opportunity for us to communicate with each other. I'm specifically thinking about the attempt to revitalize the Albuquerque chapter. And there's no way that we can do that locally unless we have the contact information for the Albuquerque chapter, for, the, for people who live in Albuquerque, uh, or unless you will actively respond to any request to send out emails or mailings to people in that community. So those are some of the things that I'd like to see. Um, and I would hope that the board would be more supportive of those kinds of activities and give us the opportunity to do the kinds of things that we would like to do. Okay. That's all. My plans would like to first address it, and then I'd like to address also what you said. Uh, yeah, Marilee, those are good points, and, and we acknowledge those things, but we have six members on the board, and that's why first order of business is to get to uh, the membership up and to get people on board, and that'll happen in November, hopefully. Um, things come in stages, and um, and that's just the way it, the way it has to be done. But those are good suggestions. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I also wanted to address part of that. Um, we're already starting to appoint some committees. Uh, as I said earlier, I've, I've got a couple of committees I'm already working on. I have one that I had uh, an ad hoc committee that I appointed earlier that's gonna be reporting today. Uh, some of the committees that you named are not in the bylaws, uh, others are, uh, but I do wanna do things right. I want to, again, I wouldn't be here if I didn't want this organization to flourish and for us to uh, to want to, to try and do better for the retirees, including ourselves, uh, in the state of New Mexico. And I would ask you uh, if now that uh, Miguel has another person that works with him and we have the Amber representative that they, they got together and did the update last time on the website. I know that the website is one of your things that you take particular interest in. And so I would ask you if we get it set up to update it again, if, if I could have Miguel's uh, assistant uh, or the, the lady that works with him to contact you along with the Amber representative so that we can get your input on when we do that. Well, I would be happy to do that as long as I see things actually getting, getting done. Yes, I would be happy to volunteer to assist with that. Okay. And Thank I you. think there is probably one other person on this call, though I will not speak for him, who would also assist in doing that as well. Okay. Uh, and uh, is that other person live down in Mexico? I will not mention who that other person is. <laughs> okay. not, you know, he's he's welcome right. to say so when it's his turn. Okay, if, but, all right. Uh, okay, but I will be happy that. to help. I would be very pleased to help with the website. And okay. as some of you may know, I am a professional writer, so you know I'm kind of good at this stuff. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. All right. Uh, who would like to be recognized next? Yeah, uh, this is Jorge Lane, uh, if, I, um, if I may speak. Uh, Mr. Yes, sir. Chairman. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm the other person that Mary Lee referred to. And yes, I would be um, happy to be involved in bringing the website up to, up to date. Uh, my, my concern is that we really need to uh, start using the website as a communication tool with retirees and also as a membership drive uh, tool. Uh, unfortunately, our comments in the past and, and detailed recommendations have not gone very far, but if it's something that you want to do now, uh, yeah, I would, I would be happy to, to be involved in that. Um, on, on a different matter, earlier in the meeting, you mentioned um, a membership drive, and I'm curious as to whether or not uh, PARA gives you contact information uh, for retirees so that, you're, so that you have a database to, to work from? And if not, um, how do you anticipate um, putting a membership drive together? What kind of details do you have so far? Uh, right now, what, what I had intended to do uh, in the past when we've done these drives, 
Amba has been the, uh, the one who helped us with the drives. Uh, they were able to, I don't know exactly where they got their information. PERA does not give us that information. PERA decided for some reason that we've been talking to them and their board seems to be responsive. It's just getting the staff to agree with, with their board to, to uh, work with us. Like I said earlier in the meeting, they don't give us the list of employees who are deceased anymore, which would be easy at the end of the month for them to just put the list together and send it over. They don't want to do it. They don't give us a list of retirees, uh, people that as they currently retire. So what I was going to do is I was wanting to put together a committee to see if we can address this uh, several ways. One is, again, trying to work with PERA and get them to do that. Second of all is uh, putting together a campaign uh, where we get things on Facebook, uh, use social media to get word out there. And also, uh, I wanted to write a letter for approval by the board to go to every state agency that can be given to retirees when, uh, when they're retiring from their organization that tells them about RPE and how to join uh, and, and give them information so that we can try and get those people as they're leaving out of state, state, city, county, uh, other organizations, uh, get them to, to join. Those were the things I was intending to do. Oh, thank, thank you. And I think those are some, some good ideas. Uh, it sounds like it is going to be, um, a, a challenge, uh, to be able to, to reach, uh, retirees, especially new retirees. And that, uh, along with that, it may also be a productive opportunity to really revive the local chapters uh, because they could be instrumental in their communities in terms of, of reaching out. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. And I, I didn't get to, I didn't address a while ago, uh, Ms. Denman brought up about the uh, Albuquerque chapter. Uh, we did put that out in the newsletter, it was put online. Uh, the contact person, the information was given out. We simply cannot give uh, somebody with the Albuquerque chapter, everybody, all the retirees that we have, all of their email addresses, home addresses, phone numbers, and that information. Uh, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want my information given out to someone I don't know. And uh, I think that our members have that same expectation of us. Uh, we will send out in our emails that we send out and continue to send out in the newsletters, any information like that that you want us to send out. We will we will try to assist you in every way we can. Uh, and maybe we can find a way, uh, because if, for us to send a mailing to all those people would be quite expensive, but if the local chapter has the money, perhaps we could get uh, AMBA and our people to work together to, you put, you put your, mail together or whatever you want to go out and uh we can address and send all that for you without sending out that list to someone outside of uh the executive director and the, the board mr president yes I, I, they did say one thing that i think is well, first place chapters are organic they need to start themselves with them like happy to help them but that's not something so i think they're right i, I don't think it's just albuquerque's Versus did I think all? Okay, I mean I think we do need to fix that in there, and I'm you know, not even a big fan of putting a chapter in there unless we know for a fact that they are meeting. Not all of them are, because I know that the Las Cruces chapter that's current. Uh, I know Rats one is current. I, well, the, the, according to this, Charlie Miller's president. Where? In Rats according to the website. And Joe Bob Sellers, Las Cruces. Joe Bob is still there. He is. Okay, well, good. You know, he makes the best barbecue ever. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. But I mean, I do that, you know, I, I 100% agree with that. We need to look at that right now. Yes. Okay. We'll, get, exactly it, we'll get it addressed. Okay. Uh, anyone else who would like to be recognized to speak? If there's not, Mr. Uh, President. Mr. President, say this is uh, Adolf Zubia. I just have some uh, issues to bring up, uh, not uh, more questions than, than, than anything else. Uh, just because of the challenges we experienced at the legislative level and, and the 
people we go up against. Do we have uh, budget issues or concerns? Because I always view that if somehow you bring subject matter experts into the fight, it helps you in that uh, in that arena. Uh, it's great that we have a lot of expertise, not only on the board and some of our members, but when we go and speak up before legislators, it's always nice to have some some analysis that was done beyond what the legislators present. Uh, that's that's a question more for the executive director. Uh, then I have some uh, uh, other other issues or questions. And again, this one, the next one's also for the executive director. We have potential legislation being proposed that's contrary to the best interest of our members. Do we have any kind of uh, process where the executive director or board members try to meet with these other groups that are in some respects pushing against us so we can work collaboratively with them to either minimize their proposal, modify it, or at least get some clarification as to why they try to do what they do. I know common sense kind of tells us we kind of know why, uh, but is there a proactive approach to trying to deal with these issues and not reactive and wait for legislation to be proposed? Uh, I know that they could come out of the, uh, who knows, they could come out of many, many arenas, so it's difficult, but I think we have a pretty good idea as to people that want to be part of the board or re remake up the board that we can kind of work with them if at all possible. Uh, the other questions or comments uh, real briefly, uh, the budget, uh, when I was looking for a synopsis of it, I wanted kind of uh, income expenses and not necessarily line items, but more or less how much we expect based on our membership and what do we expect to expend on a yearly basis? Uh, then a couple of other things. Uh, we're looking at that the automatic uh, withdrawal from para for our members. Do we have a program where uh, somebody can sign up in the middle of the year and not wait till there has to be a para uh, uh, contribution for membership purposes? Uh, lastly, uh, it's one thing to uh, have a membership drive and in, try to in, increase the numbers just for political impact and so on. And, and lastly, I'll say for monetary uh, gains, but we need to articulate our specific uh, goals or mission or intent uh, when we're asking people to say, hey, you need to participate. And, and not just because we represent your interests, but maybe the two or three critical issues that we need to uh, address and continue with. Uh, so that, those are just my general comments. Uh, I do wanna thank the board for their, uh, their actions in, their, in the past and in, in working for us. Uh, I do appreciate what you guys do. Uh, there's a lot of people that you impact that sadly uh, just hope for the best and don't realize that there's people behind the scenes like yourselves working at trying to make sure their interests are protected. Uh, I think that's one of the sad parts is sometimes when people retire, they kind of turn their, their backs on, on, on the public sector, even though uh, it's not in their best interest to just walk away because they're still going to get adversely impacted if they're not careful. So I do appreciate you got having our back and uh, look forward to uh, uh, maybe participating even more in the future. So thank you. If you could address some of those issues, Mr. President, through your board, I'd appreciate it. Thank you, Chief. And uh, I hope you can help bring a bunch more of those uh, retired firefighters on board. Yeah, and, that, and that, that and to try to get them on uh, thinking along the same lines as ourselves. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And I, there is a way to sign up uh, in the middle of the year uh, or when it's not time to do the uh, automatic deduction. Uh, it is on the website and you can sign up and you can, uh, they can pay uh, with a credit card and uh, pay their dues. And then uh, later on, if they want to do the auto deduct, they can do that. And I'll let uh, our executive director uh, answer your other questions that were uh, directed at him. Thank you, Mr. President. And, and thank you, Mr. Zubia, uh, for those concerns and those questions. Um, First of all, I, if I understand your, your first issue, kind of kind of 
uh, the budget issues and, and kind of expertise. Um, we have hired um, economists in the past, specifically around the 2019 legislative session when we were dealing with the, the big uh, pair reform bill. And we had, we had a, a well-known top economist uh, nationwide, it actually um, international credentials. And he provided um, a pretty detailed analysis and that's on our website. Um, and, and that analysis, I think was, was very helpful. Um, ultimately we, we didn't prevail um, in the way that we thought we should prevail, but, but you know, we, we will bring on experts in, in that process when needed. Um, obviously over the last couple of years, we've had some budget issues. And so we haven't hired um, outside experts, but now that our budget's back, uh, we can do that, you know, when needed at any time. Um, kind of regarding the, the legislative issues and kind of being proactive, we, we always meet with uh, both supporters and opponents um, throughout the year. Um, as, as I mentioned uh, during my initial presentation on, on the session last year, we met with the governor's office who had in the past supported the changes to the para board that were introduced last year. And as I said, we, we convinced the governor not to put that issue on, the, on her call. And so, so we were very successful before the legislation, before the legislature met um, to, to achieve that. And we continue to do that. I've had um, conversations with, uh, I mentioned Think New Mexico, I've had conversations with their executive director, um, conversations with uh, a past uh, chief financial officer for a para, para board. And so we meet with, with people that, that oppose our, our um, positions and, and opposed. We've met with the firefighters. Um, we're able to, to basically kind of reach a, a compromise with the firefighters in past sessions uh, and, and build a relationship uh, with firefighters. Um, so we do that on, on a continual basis. Um, the other effect is, as you said, Mr. President, um, any potential member can sign up anytime uh, through the online process. Um, if they want to, if members want to sign up through the automatic deduction process through PARA, PARA only deducts that once a year. Um, and, and that is in July. Um, as most of you, if you saw your, your July check, um, you saw the deduction for, for your RPM dues. And so that only happens uh, in that, on that July check. Um, as far as, the, as far as the membership drive, as you said, Ms. President, as the board has talked about, it's a, it's a difficult process because we do not get um, a database. We do not get information from PARA uh, regarding retirees. So we have to go out and find the retirees, seek them out, um, visit job sites, you know, talk to employers. Um, and so, especially over the last couple of years with, with the pandemic, uh, that's been nearly impossible. Um, but it's something that we're, we're uh, hope to do um, in the coming years. And, uh, you know, I think, I think we're gonna be, uh, see some success in a membership drive. Thank you. Um, anyone else that would like to be recognized to speak? Hi, Wood. Yeah. Okay. I would uh, like to speak. Okay, who's this? I am John Rivers. I would like to speak. Yes, sir. When, um, when a motion is introduced into committee at the state legislative lesson, uh, level, is it possible for an alert, the, and the, the, a motion that does have a bearing on para, is it possible for an alert to be put out to the membership so that we can, the members can start viewing the progress of that motion uh, on, the, on the state legislative website, either the, at the live, the live uh, meeting or a, a video recording? so that we can follow the progress of that motion as it progresses through the committee. It, it is uh, definitely possible. Uh, we can do it. Uh, Miguel tries to stay on top of uh, all the legislation. I try to go up with him. Uh, in the past, Joel has other members, uh, but Miguel stays on top of that. When we do see something, uh, I have no problem with us sending out an email blast, letting everyone know what's going on. Uh, what bill was uh, either introduced or was brought up in committee. Uh, the problem, part of the problem is, is trying to 
there's a lot of committees meeting at the same time. And so sometimes it's another day or two before we know what exactly happened in that committee because they don't always post their minutes uh, like they should. But yes, we can do that and we will. Haven't we done it in the past? We have done it in the past, but not on as an immediate basis as what Mr. Rivers is asking about. So that was just, further, just, just elaborate on that a little bit. Uh, we, we do the, do that. Um, legislation is can be introduced, uh, can, can be pre-filed before the start of the legislative session. I think there's about a, a 30 or 45 day window. Uh, and some legislators do that. They pre-file those legislation. And, and we, you know, as soon as we find out about it, we, we do notify and we do do a blast to our membership. Most legislation or a lot of legislation, however, is introduced uh, after the start of the session. And so that's the first time we'll, we'll have an opportunity to look at it and we'll, and we'll, we'll notify um, our members of, as soon as we receive that. Uh, just for instance, uh, yesterday, um, I received a call from Representative Bill Reen, who's a strong ally of the retirees and has been for a long time. He, last year, he introduced legislation to allow retirees to go back to work. That is, keep their pension, plus also go back to work. And he's planning to, to reintroduce similar legislation. He hasn't drafted the, the updated version of that, but, uh, but as soon as he does and provides that with us, we'll send that out to the membership. So sometimes we, we learn about legislation like that from, from legislators. Other times we hear rumors about legislation um, and, and, you know, but we don't see it until it's actually uh, dropped. And so, but, but we'll, we'll notify um, our membership of any pertinent legislation, legislation that deals with, with para or issues with retirees um, as soon as we hear about it. Good uh, yeah, I just wanted to mention that the legislature itself has a website, and you can go to the website and look up any legis potential legislative the Senate bills and the House bills. You can look them up and see what to, what might pertain to you or to us or to retirees in general, and you can look them up yourself if you'd like. And I think part of what Mr. Rivers was getting at, I think he's already doing that. But what happens sometimes is the way these bills get introduced uh, by the nomenclature or whatever else, it's not always evident exactly what they are. So uh, if, if we stay on top of it, I, you know, we get the email out. But I, 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 my understanding with Mr. Rivers is already doing that and just wants to, to be able to do a, a better job of being able to look it up if, if we tell him this is, what, this is one that's going to affect you. Yes. <laughs> Anything else, sir? No, that's all. Um, I have monitored in the past, but I received the information from another member. I didn't receive it from any any board member. Um, and I and, and I know the website keeps a calendar of uh, of of current events and, and possible future events, and it is possible to monitor that calendar. Okay, we will take care of that, sir, and we'll make sure that we get those email blasts out. Um, Mike Hart, we'll get to you in a minute. There was uh, a lady that had her hand up before you. There you go, ma'am. Hi, this is Melanie Deason in Roswell. Thank you all for meeting. And Doug, thank you for your 35 years of service that I've known you. you see, have, your light has not dimmed. <laughs> um, Amba is what, one question I have. Can you explain it a bit? When I get the uh, mailings, it's not a junk mailing, but it's talking about helicopter rides and dental and vision. And some of this I already have with my health plan. So why is this paper mailing really going out? And maybe can it be electronic for those of us that are electronic that would like to have it and we'd save the stamp, et cetera, paper? That's one question. And uh, then I'll follow up when you answer that. <clears throat> yeah, I, I'll try to answer it. Our executive director may have more information than I do, but uh, we the organization, well before I came around uh, or retired, had a uh, uh, had a, a relationship with RPE and have maintained that relationship. Uh, they give us uh, right now, I believe, it's seventy five hundred dollars a year, uh, and their uh, part of their deal is they market. Uh, their insurance, that, that's their whole deal is selling insurance and they market it. And uh, 
I get both. I get the mail and I get the electronic. Uh, and I know at times it can get a little overwhelming with getting so many mailings and getting it in the email. Uh, I've learned, uh, hate to say it, but I've learned when I see some of that stuff, it goes in the circle pile and uh, without even looking at it. And uh, if the organization decided that we didn't, I mean, AMBA supports us in other ways. They help us with our, our drives. They help with maintaining the website. Matter of fact, uh, the website actually belongs to them, is my understanding, and that uh, uh, they set it up for us. And so uh, if we wanted to do away with that uh, partnership that we have with them, uh, it could cost us more than just the $7,500 that, uh, that we, you know, that we would be doing away with. Uh, we might be able to ask them, though, if you're going to send it one way, our members would prefer not to receive it both ways and see if, if that's possible. Uh, Miguel, do you, would, do you think we could ask them that? So, Ms. Fredlin, just to back on what you said, so, so AMBA is a partner of RPNN, um, and they do provide that, that uh, you know, kind of annual amount. But as, as uh, Ms. Francis said, they also provide, they, they maintain the website, um, and they also recruit new members. Uh, they're, they're probably our biggest partner in helping us recruit because they, they have contacts with all the para-affiliated members, the cities and the counties throughout the state, and they're in there meeting with them. And so they do a lot of recruitment. So, so a lot of our new members, I'd say most of our new members are recruited through AMPA. So they're, they're an important partner. Um, I understand that, that the emails and the, the mailings do get repetitive, and especially for the members that already have their medical insurance taken care of other ways. But a lot of our members do take care, do uh, purchase the, the, the hospital and the ambulance insurance. Um, and so um, I, I think they're a valuable partner, but that's something that, that the board wanted to, to reevaluate that, that partnership. That's something that the board can do. Um, and certainly we can, we can talk to AMBA about the uh, uh, frequency of, of their, their emails and, and their, their solicitations, but, but they, are, they are a member and it's kind of the, the trade-off we make for their, for their partnership. And I think they recently got some new people in this office here because it seems like every time they get new people, the frequency of the, of the mailings increases. <laughs> so, Chris, yes. my background, the history of this, is AMBA had a partnership with, uh, they really partner with teachers. It's the American Members Benefit Association and it's, it was a teacher sort of thing. And when my wife was the executive director here, she started talking to them to, to get them to do exactly what we're talking about now. So that's kind of the history. But A, the money that the, the stuff, the solicitations cost us nothing as far as I'm concerned. Right. We don't pick that. And B, uh, how, do you know how long we've been members? I'm trying to think. It's, I mean, how long have been oh, with uh, us? Long yeah. time. I mean, so we've got $7,500,000 out of them over this period of time plus what they do in helping recruiting. And yeah, I mean, if you're over 50 and soon you will be knowing. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, you'll notice ARP sends you a thing or two now. Two. Oh, yeah. anyway, okay, just... okay. No, this is good. Well, I'm glad to understand it. I would suggest and maybe to give to them is put a little postcard in that mailing that says, oh, I know of somebody who's a new retiree and then it can just get mailed back to them. You know, it might be a way to, prod our brains to inform them, which then gets back to us as the RPNM, that there's some new bodies out there. And, and the, their frequency mailings is, is their business. There's a, even with Salvation Army, I used to wonder about the redundancy of some of these, but they would get the money out of it. So the, for asking for donations. So the point is it works. And so we'll trust that they're, they're doing what they're, they need to be doing. Um, the second piece is on this forcing PERA to give us info on who the retirees are. Uh, might a freedom of information request uh, force their hand? On, on what? Getting on the para, giving us oh, the list of retirees. On the deaf people, uh, it's different. There's too much predatory stuff that goes on when you know somebody's died. And uh, so I can see why they're staying closed mouth on that. 
But on new retirees, can we force it with a freedom of information request? Um, we can look at a FOIA on that. Um, what we want right now, one of the things that we, uh, we'd like to have the information, but we also don't want to get into an adversarial, uh, and, and unfortunately, sometimes they look at those requests that way. Uh, their board is working with us. We seem to have a good relationship with the BERA board. And if we, we don't want to get into uh, an adversarial position with them, uh, I, I think that if we get uh, Miguel to talk to them a little bit more before we try something with that, with that or ask them, if we FOIA this, uh, you know, what, what information are you going to be able to provide us? Uh, good idea. And I also really like your idea about putting the postcard in and where they can send in other uh, new retirees. Thank you. Uh, there's a third piece. J oh, Jason had, Jason wanted to address your, so. Yeah. I was just going to say, um, you know, they're probably looking at it as that's a, you know, they can't be giving them pers personal information, you know, people's personal information. But I was going to ask, do we have the ability, everybody kind of has to go into their office to start the process of retirement or, or deal with them one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, in some way or another. Are they, can we get Aaron to allow us to put our, um, you know, copies of our, of our documents or our... Yes sign up uh, information in their office so that they can hand out to those people that are coming up to retire. And also everybody that's out here, you know, listening to us right now and part of this meeting, we all know people that um, maybe we could start passing cards out to those people too. And do we have it on our website that people can print those cards out and be able to like, I can print one out and hand it to somebody that I know that's gonna retire. We have that on our website. I mean, first question. We, we don't used have to, We website. used to put. We used to put the uh, uh, pretty document in all of the packets. Right. The PRA allowed that, so I don't know if they want. So what they don't want is, if they give it to us to solicit, then they have to give it to everybody to solicit, and they don't want to do that. If you're running for election, they'll give you the list, but it's on <laughs> the disk. Yeah. You know, that so you can only use it for that purpose. And, and we we have the budget now. We have the money to be able to to supply them with the, the information to put in the packets like jason was bringing up so that when they do get that packet they'll have that there if they'll agree to do it and i'll i'll ask our executive director to to address that with them yes sir. question her her point is well taken when you get the postcard in the mail that Amber's going to recruit or have a dinner or whatever are they using our mailing list or are they using all of PERA's mailing lists? Our mailing list came from them. So the AMBA has their own list. But when they send the postcard out to everybody, all the retirees, how extensive is that? Pretty extensive. Yeah, they they have a bigger list than we do. Yeah. Well, so they, they have. have put on stuff there. They may they have a much bigger list than, than we do in terms of that. They get paid yeah. the list. So, so, Mr. President, um, you know, Mr. Vice President. So, 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 my suspicion is, is you're correct, is that it, that Amber, they're they're actively, they have staff, they have they have a fairly significant staff, so they're actively going to the counties and the cities and the, you know, the state employers, and and recruiting retirees. So, so they're doing that on their own. We need to tag on to that better than we're doing now. Yeah. yeah. Well, part part of the problem is that they have, you know, twenty or are so field representatives. No, I understand. I understand. They're doing the legwork. They, they are doing the legwork. They may be aware of more recent retirees than we are. They, 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 they certainly are. And they're doing the legwork. And as I said, they recruit a lot of those folks for us. So so when they contact those folks, they're they're providing them with the, the forms and the information. Yeah, I, I think we need to maybe figure out a way to follow up on that with the folks that they are discovering are recently retired. Right. Yes, 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 a good, good point. Well, good, you've got your homework on that and hopefully we'll build our ranks. <clears throat> the third piece has to do with this, the errant Senator that tried to pull the fast one last year. And I believe I allowed to name him Phelps Anderson out of Roswell. 
Uh, is that who am I correct that that's who we were? Yes, ma'am, you're correct. Okay, I had a lengthy conversation with him after getting the email alerts from you all, so thank you. It was surprising that, that uh, his secretary made sure that I got to talk to him in person, and I think we talked for 40 minutes, and I listened, and I would counter his, object, counter his comments, and then I'd listen, and I'd counter. It was a great, great thing. I wish it had been recorded. He's slick. Uh, Phelps is slick. However, uh, <laughs> I, 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 although I couldn't, you know, I couldn't support what he was doing. And I told him so on the why of it. And yes, I'm on his constituent. And I sit at parties sometimes with him and chat and try to inform him of other common sense things. But the bottom line is I was at a Democratic Party meeting recently and commentary was made that with redistricting in Roswell, somehow, I don't know, something happened with the other side of the state. We may have lost that seat. Now, this again, I, this is hearsay from what I was picking up. We may have lost that seat. That's in one piece. The other part is the fallout from Phelps uh, voting on the cleanup bill regarding abortion uh, in the legislature last year may have lost him his seat anyway because this is a very conservative part of the state. We're little Texas over here. So Phelps may be going by the wayside whenever his whatever year's term is up. But don't think that the issues, as you've been discussing before, have gone aside and think New Mexico doing what they are doing. So anyway, that's hearsay in case it you know, lands in anywhere that can make some sense from what I picked up here. Thank you. And uh, I, I also know several people who have spoken to uh, Representative Anderson, uh, and I have spoken to him, and I fully intend, I'm waiting to see what happens in November. Uh, and if he's going to be back in there, I fully intend to go and sit down and meet with him uh, on this issue to see if we can. And he, he, he's been pretty adamant with everyone that he's talked to about it. And he doesn't back off. Uh, for some reason, he's taken it as a, uh, his, his personal issue. But uh, we will meet with him and try to, try, try to talk to him again. Uh, we're going to try to meet more at the board meet them. We have to encourage you meet with your legislators, talk to them, let them know what's going on, let them know where uh, this organization stands on uh, on legislation and on, on the things that are going on. And we're, we were talking earlier before the meeting, uh, the board members, uh, one of the things I'm going to bring up later is, is getting business cards for the board members so that we can give them out to the legislators when we talk to them so that they need to get back to us or they need information they can They've got a number they can call us at. And we talked about putting a, a card of that type on the website so that members could uh, print one out uh, that uh, you could also give to legislators uh, and, and hopefully further our mission and, and our goals. Thank you for all you're doing. It's very important. I'm very proud to be part of uh, this organization. and. Doug, thank you years ago for reminding me to stick it out because one of the best plans in the country, you were absolutely correct. Okay, my card, I think we, uh, you were next. He's uh, right above her. Okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, my card from uh, Las Cruces chapter two. This is a question I brought up before. I just wanted to know if there's anything new on it. We keep receiving a 1099 uh, income from our bank on our on our treasury, on our CD. And uh, I've been told, uh, just don't worry about it. It's $10.84 a year so far. Uh, anything new on that about having to report that to uh, the feds or the state tax-wise? Okay, for, for those of you that may not know, this is the, the local chapter has a CD, uh, has money and they get interest on it. So they're, that's what they're getting the 1099 for. Mike's still the only answer we've been able to get is don't worry about it. And that's, I mean, that's from financial experts and the other people we've talked to uh, is the, the IRS is not going to be looking for $10 to 94 cents uh, until they come and knock on your door. It's not profit organizations. Yeah. It's just a question of filing the right tax form. And I would say it would cost a lot more than $10. Oh, yeah, to, to file yeah, the forms. So, yeah. I hesitate to uh, publicly say, you know, file the U.S. government. 
but I think in this case, uh, yeah. But I'm sorry, Mike, we, we haven't gotten anything else on it. Okay, well, we've solved part of the problem. We we did away with that CD and just moved the money directly to the account, so we won't get any interest anymore. But that is pending still a little bit this year. Okay. 22. So if you hear anything else, let me know. Yes, sir. Anyone else? If there's no one else, uh, we'll get to our uh, old business. Um, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Yeah, uh, this is Jorge Lane. Uh, yes, sir. Again, just, just a short comment. Um, I think earlier you alluded to uh, a member uh, tying in from Mexico. And well, <laughs> that's, that's me. Uh, and what I wanted to do was express my appreciation to you all for holding this meeting by, by Zoom. Um, and to ask you to consider taking it a step forward. Uh, and that is that many retirees, as you know, live outside of the Albuquerque area around the state, in other states, and like me in, in, in other countries. And uh, uh, in this modern age, uh, Zoom meetings work so well as, as a way to make decisions, as a way to get information out. Um, so I, I hope uh, that you will entertain making a practice of this going into the future. And I look forward to, um, um, uh, to, being tie, to be able to tie into those meetings. So again, thank you all. Thanks, Jorge. And, uh... You don't need to hope that we're going to do it. We've already decided that even when we do in-person meetings in the future, that we're going to be having it on Zoom. Uh, also, the biggest problem with the Zoom meeting like today is we have, uh, it's hard to take a vote uh, in a Zoom meeting and be able to count the votes. We're trying to find, uh, and I think with our IT expert and his expertise, we, we're for the next meeting may be able to do that where we can count uh, positive and negative votes on, on issues. Uh, we're, that's why we're holding off on right now some uh, bylaw changes because we want to have an in-person meeting so that we can have the membership vote and we can get a good count. And hopefully by then we can also count the Zoom votes and be able to because uh, it's some of it's new to all of us. And uh, I, I know our IT guy really knows his stuff. So I think we can accomplish that. And uh, I appreciate you bringing it up. And I thank you for sending your email earlier this year about putting this on Zoom. Does anybody have anything else? Yes. Uh, Lorenzo Rodriguez, can you hear me? This is who? Lorenzo Rodriguez, can you hear me? Yes, sir, Mr. Rodriguez. Can you can you step back from the mic? Can you step back from your microphone just a little bit? Okay, how's that? A uh, little further back. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. A little, okay. little loud, but you might okay. want to step back a little further. Okay, well, what I, what I, all I want to ask is um, I get a lot of calls from retirees, and I know you mentioned the letter about the uh, 13th check. And, and I think uh, a lot of these uh, retirees are not members, but I try to get them to join. But I think they're wondering, what is it that you, you all are going to do to reinstate or help them with the, um, the measures that were taken away? So I don't, know if you, I don't know if you can answer that now or if you have a plan or if you're going to get a plan. Um, or type it in the chat and I'll relay it. Can you type your question in the chat and then we'll relay it? Because we're having a very typical, difficult time. Uh, the, there's a lot of overmodulation coming across the speakers and it's uh, it's making it difficult to understand. Okay, I'll try. I'll try again. Can you hear me? Yes, much better. Okay. All I want to know is if, if uh, I get a lot of calls from members that want to know what we're going to do with the raises, that would help membership drive. Okay, you're talking about the COLA, the cost of living allowance raises. What's the only raises we get, Mr. President, yes. Right, and right now, 
again, as I, as I mentioned earlier in the meeting, we're working behind the scenes uh, to try and get, uh, and it's not just, uh, all of our members are concerned and wanting their colas back. Uh, in, in these economic times that are going on right now, we can't get any senators or representatives that are gonna introduce a bill to put the COLA back, especially when they haven't appropriated any additional money to make PERA uh, funded for a longer period of time. And so without that, it's difficult to do. We're gonna continue working behind the scenes at this time to get that done or to get the uh, formula that the legislature put in, in the bill that took away our COLA uh, implemented. Uh, it was looking good until about four months ago that we might get that implemented this year. Then, then the market went uh, way down for the last three to four months and it kind of negated the gains that were there because under that formula, us getting that money is based on the rate of return that PERA gets on the investments. We are gonna to continue to work on it. I know if we could get them a raise right now, they would all say a bunch more would join. I agree with you. But in reality, right now, that is that is not gonna happen. Uh, we're looking at at least, I think, two to three years before we're gonna be able to accomplish that. Uh, and, and we're gonna stay on top of it. We're gonna to continue to work on it. Uh, as a board, and I hope as an organization, and personally, I will continue to work on it. I know that that it's important to all of us as retirees. Uh, that's that's our income, and healthcare goes up, groceries go up, gas goes up, and your PERA doesn't go up. Well, uh, it makes it very difficult, and people have to make choices on things. So we we understand, and we're going to continue to work on it. But that's where we're at right now. Okay, thank you. That, that gives me something to work on. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. And I, Jason also wanted to address that. Um, so I think along with all of that, we all know that we have elections coming up and uh, we obviously can't speak to most of these people in person because we're still using the, the COVID as a, as a reason not to have in-person meetings. But everybody that's out there, everybody that's listening, you need to make those phone calls to, you know, representatives, your legislators, your governor's office, and basically let them know how you feel. And I do see a gentleman with, a, I think it's an RPE shirt, yellow shirt in the middle there, Mr. Rivers. <laughs> uh, I think when we are able to get back out of this, one of the biggest things that we had as a plus is when we were all wearing those shirts and we showed up at the roundhouse. And uh, that'll be coming up this legislative, uh, legislative session, I think we need to start showing up because like with everything else, uh, the people that make the decision listen to money in numbers. And uh, you show up with numbers and they start counting and every individual is three. So keep talking to each other, keep getting involved. You know, we're gonna have another meeting here in November Meanwhile, call, email, do whatever it takes to get the attention of the people that are running in your area and make your voice heard. So, okay, anyone else? Okay, I'm gonna move to old business. Mr. President. Yes. We thank them all for their contributions here. It was nice oh, yes, thank tonight. you very much. We appreciate you being on here. We want you to stay on until the meeting's over and we appreciate your comments. Uh, we appreciate your willingness to get involved, uh, and just by being on here, you're showing you're involved and you're paying, paying attention to what's going on, and uh, that motivates us. And we we want to we want to keep moving this organization and its mission forward. Uh, so, Mr. Thanks. President, yes, just one more brief comment, and this is kind of tongue in cheek. I just want to note that in the old days there were a lot of door prizes and you can't do door prizes when you're on Zoom. <laughs> so that was Marley, just kind of- Too bad you weren't here because I won the Mercedes. <laughs> well, darn. <laughs> uh, thanks, Marianne. We, we That's why we want to have those meetings where we either have more dirt for a dinner and we have door prizes. And those were put in there to encourage people 
to come to the meetings, and we want to do that in the future as we're able to hold these meetings. And I hope in November we'll be able to have an in-person meeting and all get to see each other in person. Um, under old business, we I had appointed a uh, ad hoc committee to address uh, the uh, executive director's job description and duties. Uh, there was an old version, and uh, I had appointed an ad hoc committee uh, from the executive board. Uh, since I had three members that could get together and meet in Raton, that's where I made up that committee at. Uh, we had uh, Barbara, and she was the chair of our committee, and Joel and Lee. Uh, and Barbara has asked Lee to uh, present the information, uh, the recommendation that the committee came up with on our executive director's job description and duties. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, for the board members, I have uh, a handout kind of on a blue piece of paper uh, with changes that we suggested uh, in, in red. <clears throat> Crossed out if we suggest deleting it, uh, underlined if we suggested adding it. And then a follow up piece of paper on uh, the peach or salmon or whatever that color is. Uh, where we pulled out the job qualifications into a separate document. And I, I apologize to those members here on Zoom that I'm not smart enough to have figured out ahead of time how to have this available to you. Um, as uh, Mr. Francis said, we were formed as an ad hoc committee to review the executive director job description and recommend any changes. The three of us met uh, in Raton on August 1st and review the current uh, job description and older versions of the job description and any supplements that uh, we could come up with. Uh, overall, we found that the uh, document uh, was uh, reasonably thorough. We removed, uh, as you can see, some unnecessary words and words that we thought were unneeded or unnecessary. We added some words to make uh, clarifications where we thought it might be a little bit cleaner. Uh, one change that I noticed this morning that we neglected to make was to change RPENM to RPE. So I'm going to suggest that on your own copies, when you have leisure time, you cross off the NM part to make it uh, uniform with our, our current title. Um, Overall, we made no, no major changes. We, we tried to separate things out a little bit, tried to clean it up a little bit. As I said, I, we all felt that the uh, job qualifications probably should be a separate document. And so by cutting and pasting uh, down right. in that salmon sheet, uh, that uh, pretty much sums up our, uh, our, our work. Um, and I thought we all felt that this was probably a, a, an item that should be revisited every few years just to make sure that it stays current with those uh, duties that we uh, request of the executive director. So the committee is recommending that the board consider those changes uh, and uh, I'll open it up for discussion. Yeah. Mr. President and, and, and Lee, just just very quickly, just on the name thing, um, the, our, our name is officially RPENM. I think kind of the stylized version, uh, where it just says RPE and then has the New Mexico flag. I think that's supposed to symbolize. Either way is correct. Yeah, so I think that's supposed to symbolize New Mexico. Okay. Right. So, but but officially, right. I wouldn't have any sleep over that tonight. Yeah, so, it, was okay. a, it was a modernization of the logo. Right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yes, Michael. Yeah, I just have one question uh, under what you said, Lee, about minimum job qualifications. Make this a separate document. Um, would it still be a supplement to the bylaws, or is this just not? This is not part of the bylaws at all. It's not part of the bylaws at all. Okay, um, so it's been removed, and uh, the separate document would be an attachment to this. I I would That's think right. so. Okay. okay. If I may answer, Mr. President, yes, sir. If, if in the future, 100 years from now, we have to look for another executive director because we always moved on to something bigger or better, 
then it would be nice to have a short document that basically says this is what the job qualifications are. I see. And then people who are really interested, uh, we, we can go through job duties and descriptions and so forth with them. But if we have to post something that says minimum qualifications, that, then separating that out, rather than having it in the middle of the document where it kind of got lost, uh, okay. we all felt that it, was, that it was better to clean or to separate those out. Makes sense. Thank you. I only have one recommendation that uh, needs to, I think, needs to be put in here because uh, it's not spelled out. Is that the executive director position is not a full time position? It's a part time position. I agree with you. I'm not sure that that is spelled out anywhere, and whether it needs to be in the be. In the beginning, as opposed to maybe later when we kind of do a delineation of duties, um, that might even be best handled in like the very first paragraph. Right. Okay. All right. Good suggestion. Thank you, Colonel. Yes. Um, yes, sir. Two things. First thing is, can we can our members expect that this will show up on our website so they can uh, once it's approved? Yes. Right. The second thing is. What kind of bonuses are you getting? Yeah. That Mercedes that you want? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we gave him the Volkswagen version. <laughs> he got that as a bonus, but he decided he didn't want it. Up so. <laughs> we had a bonus system. I mean, I, I like bonus system for recruiting, but, but it didn't work out too well. And we don't have one right now. And this is an annual salary plus an incentive bonus related. As far as I know, we don't have a policy for incentive related bonuses. So I would I would ask that it either delete that or I would prefer uh, plus incentive bonuses uh, bonus uh, as approved by the board. And so if we approve an incentive bonus, we still have that option to do that. It's the very last thing for salary. Right. I think, I think that cleans it up. But yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. So I can't make a decision. That's pretty good. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, and I'm, I'm, I don't know if the board wants to act on this today or if you want to act on this at our November meeting. I, they have make a suggestion if we put this on the website like it is, and give the members an opportunity to see if they have any comments and act on it. I mean, you're not, you feel secure enough with the job to out the Yeah, um, we, we've got to, again, we'll have to see about getting with the website administrators and getting this put on there so that all the membership can see it. Uh, and, and in its revised form, if we will provide the revised revisions we talked about uh, in its revised form, uh, and then we act on it in November. I think that's a nice suggestion. Uh, I would like to, I would entertain a motion to that effect. I, I think just because it's under old business, I think that's probably going to create without, okay, we'll be created. You've always wanted to do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Boy, somebody's looking for a box. So yeah. <laughs> they would never let me do that. I was yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, under new business, uh, I want to let the members know that I'm going to be contacting some of you, and I, I appreciate you again for being on here uh, because I'm going to be appointing uh, committees over the next couple of months uh, to do uh, some of the jobs like Marilee had, had suggested. Uh, I've already got uh, talked to some people about being on the election committee. Uh, I want to uh, work with Miguel uh, on putting together more people on the legislative committee, uh, work with Michael on the budget and finance committee. Uh, I wanted to, to get some of these things and so I'll be contacting you. And as those committees are appointed, we will put it, uh, try to put it on the website. And when we put out, hopefully we should be putting out a newsletter after this meeting uh, within a month. And uh, it should be an announcing the November meeting uh, we should be uh, able to put that information who's on those committees uh, so that, uh, and if we will ask if you want just your names, uh, the people that are on those committees, or if you uh, would like to get input from the membership, if you'd like to give either your email address or, or phone number so 
members could communicate with you and give you their suggestions. Uh, so I, I, I want everybody to know that we're going to be doing that, I'll be appointing those committees. Um, does anybody have anything else under new business? Well, kind of a small meeting. Do we have a date? We yeah, don't have a date yet. I think we need a date. Yeah, yeah, in November. Uh, not the uh, not Thanksgiving. We have a location <laughs> even. <laughs> Probably me. The here, location right? will probably be here. Yeah. That's one of the uh, pluses of having this. Uh, our office here is that's part of our rent. Is it's got a large facility here where we can accommodate quite a few people, and uh, we can have people here, and, and uh, we can have a meal or have hors d'oeuvres or whatever here. And uh, Miguel's office is right upstairs. So. You have any suggestions for dates, Miguel? Mr. President, uh, members of the board, so, so we usually do this on Saturday. Um, so, you know, that that's uh, looking like the 5th, 12th, and 19th are our potential Saturdays. The 19th is getting close to the Thanksgiving week. Um, but the, uh, the 5th and 12th are pretty good days. The 12th kind of being uh, closer to the, the middle of November. Uh, it's up to the board. That's so it's basically before the election or after the election. Well, the, the right election, the U.S. election. Yeah, yeah. I, so, I would suggest the twelfth. Yeah, so we can cut out. Yeah, the twelfth will be the election. I think twelfth is a good day. How about uh, Joel? Yeah, twelfth. Well, Michael. Barbara, as far as I, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Barbara says she's getting old. We don't believe her. <laughs> Your hair <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was going to say so, but I'll be nice. <laughs> okay, so the 12th, November 12th. Don't ask questions. You want to One other suggestion um, is that if, uh, if, if, sure, if the board's uh, with, you know, desired, um, we could also ask any members that have suggestions for an article for the newsletter or information for the newsletter if they want to send that in. We'd be happy to take a look at it and see if it's appropriate for the newsletter. Yes, please. If anybody has any anything you want in the newsletter, uh, please submit it. We'll take a look at it. Uh, hopefully, it's uh, something that we can put in the newsletter, um, and, and uh, it's not just uh, somebody telling me where to go. So, Mr. President, if we're meeting on the twelfth, we talked about a. Uh, uh, reception or things like that, would that be on the evening of the 11th? And we, we, would do, right. we would do uh, the board, we would have a meeting on the 11th for uh, the, board, the board, just the board on the 11th, and then have a reception that night, uh, the evening of the 11th here at the uh, FOP, and then have our meeting. So, so Mr. Brent, Brent, just, just to, to a little bit of caution, a couple of things. There's one we still have to check with the FOP if, right. if the 12th is available. Um, you and, know, the and the 11th, if we're going to do that. Right. And then also just uh, be cognizant of the of the, uh, the COVID situation right. and how that's looking at that. Oh, no, we'll stay on top of it. And, and um, Miguel has a physician here in Albuquerque that he's been uh, talking to. And we're fortunate to have a physician on our board. Uh, so he also advises us. We'll keep an eye on it. Uh, Hopefully it looks, uh, the latest things that I've seen on the news and read in the last few days is it's not going down right now, but it's flattening again. And so hopefully it starts going down and then monkeypox will attack us all. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. That does not need a second. Second. Doesn't need a second. Okay. Yeah. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much Thank for you. coming on.